65 volts on the neutral and 53 volts on the hot. Is this safe? Hey guys, a quick note before we start. This video is independent. It's not sponsored by any generator or power station brand. The sponsor is unrelated. More about that a little later on. So I plugged my meter into this brand new battery power station and what I saw didn't make any sense. About 65 volts on the neutral to ground and about 53 volts on the hot to ground. That's not how things work with utility power, right? We should be seeing about zero volts on the neutral and about 120 volts on the hot. So what's going on here? And more importantly, is it safe? Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly why this happens, why you're seeing strange voltages on your portable generator or your battery power station, and is it something that you actually need to worry about? We'll take meter readings on a portable generator and a few different power stations. We'll perform some tests to see what's actually going on here, and then I'll answer a related question that so many people struggle with. Should you have a bonded or a floating neutral on your portable generator? If you're new here, I'm John with Backyard Maine. I've been in the electrical industry for my whole career, working as an electrician, a contractor, and an electrical engineer. And I can tell you, if you're seeing strange voltages on your hot and neutral, it's not a defect. There's a reason behind it, and we're gonna make sense of it right now. Let's take a look at a standard utility fed wall receptacle. So we have 122 volts from hot to neutral, just what we'd expect. Then from neutral to ground, we have nothing, which is what we'd expect. Then if we go from hot to ground, we have 122 volts again. So no surprises there. Let's take a look at this Anchor F3000. We'll go from hot to neutral and we have 120 volts. Then from neutral to ground, 70 volts. That's not what we'd expect. And then let's go from, oops. Then we'll go from hot to ground and we have 50 volts. Strange readings, right? Let's take a look at this F3800. We'll check hot to neutral first. Hot to neutral right at 120 volts. Neutral to ground, 15 volts. And hot to ground is 103 volts. So again, very strange readings. Now let's check this Blue Eddy AC180. We'll start out with hot to neutral and 121 volts. Neutral to ground, 65 volts. And hot to ground is 52 volts. So we're showing some very strange readings on all three of our power stations. Let's test out the portable generator. We have 125 volts from hot to neutral. About 11 volts from neutral to ground. And 110 volts from hot to ground. Every time when we read hot to neutral, we see about 120 volts. But when we read hot to ground and neutral to ground, the numbers don't line up. On utility power, neutral to ground should be right at zero volts, and hot to ground should be right about 120 volts. So what's happening here? The answer is that most power stations and many portable generators have what's called a floating neutral. That means that the neutral isn't bonded to ground inside the unit. A bonded neutral generator looks like this where the neutral and ground are connected together inside the generator. But a floating neutral generator will not have that connection. 
In your home's main power panel or at the first service disconnect, the neutral bus bar is tied directly to ground. This is called the main bonding jumper. But that's not the case on my generator or on these power stations. Here, the neutral is floating in relation to ground. Now, because our neutral is floating, our meter doesn't have a clear reference point. Digital multimeters are high impedance devices. So they pick up what we call capacitive coupling inside the power supply. That's why we're seeing our unusual voltage readings. It looks odd or even scary, but it's what we call phantom voltage and there's almost no current behind it. So here's the question. If we have voltage on our neutral, what happens if we connect our power supply to a bonded neutral system in our home? For example, this easy generator switch that's used to back up power to my boiler. It's wired for a floating neutral generator. So when connected to a backup power supply, the neutral will be bonded to ground through the electrical system. Will that create a short circuit when it's connected since we have voltage on our neutral? We'll try that in a minute, but first let's make a bonding plug. A bonding plug is used to make a floating neutral generator bonded when it's used as a standalone system or not connected to your home. We'll simply make a connection between the green ground terminal and the silver neutral terminal on this plug. If you do this, be sure not to make a connection between the green ground terminal and the bronze hot terminal because that would be a short circuit. You can buy bonding plugs too online if you don't want to go through the trouble of making one. So if voltage on the neutral is going to be a problem, we should know it right away when we plug this grounding plug into our power station. So what do you think? Is it going to short out or is it going to fix our voltage readings? Let's find out. Here it goes. Well, it didn't short anything out and everything still looks fine on our display screen. Let's check our voltages again. Okay, let me get this meter where you can see it. I think that's pretty good. All right. From hot to neutral, we have 121 volts. From neutral to ground, we have zero volts. Ah, and from hot to ground, we have our 121 volts. And there it is. Once we bond our neutral to ground, our voltages snapped right back to what we're used to seeing in our homes. So our hot to neutral reads 121 volts our neutral to ground reads zero volts, and our hot to ground reads 121 volts. So our phantom voltage is gone. But is this really the best test? While our neutral and ground are bonded together at our power station through our bonding plug, the power station itself is actually not connected to earth ground. Let's try to run our boiler from a power station and find out what happens when it's connected to a bonded neutral home electrical system. We'll connect an extension cord to our easy switch and the other end to our power station and then turn it on. We'll turn the switch from normal to off and then over to generator. I have a display on the controls, so we do have backup power. So there it is. The boiler is now running on backup power. So there's no problem connecting it to a bonded neutral system. Should my generator have a bonded neutral? A common question I get all the time is whether your generator needs a bonded or a floating neutral. Now, there's a lot of misinformation out there, but it's very important that you understand when a bonded neutral is and isn't required at a generator. We're gonna cover all that next, but first I wanna take a minute to thank Ideal for sponsoring this video.
If you've been watching my content over the past few years, you've probably noticed I use a lot of ideal tools and equipment in my videos. In fact, like many professional electricians, I've been using ideal products for my whole career. They offer everything from wire connectors to conduit benders, hand tools, fish tapes, even instrumentation. And I was really happy to partner with them because I really like the brand and I was using their products anyways. You may have noticed that I've been using an ideal multimeter throughout this video. This one is the ideal model 61-415 True RMS multimeter. It has a ton of features that I'll cover in another video, but my favorite ones are the split jaw amp meter, which makes it easy to take amp readings in tight spaces where getting a clamp around the cable can be difficult. The tight sight display on the bottom, giving us a second display. Also great for tight spaces and for keeping your face away from live equipment. And the built-in flashlight and illuminated display for those darker areas so we can see what we're doing. It even has a non-contact voltage tester, which is really convenient. I'll link this meter and all my other tool recommendations down in the video description. Thanks again to Ideal for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's circle back to that floating versus bonded neutral question because this is really important. In any grounded electrical system, the neutral to ground bond can only happen in one location. In your home, that's usually going to be at your main service panel or it'll be at your first service disconnect. So if we connect a generator or a power station through a transfer switch like I have here, or through a back feed breaker, we don't want the generator itself to also have a bonded neutral. The generator will become bonded when we connect our cable to our home. If the generator was also bonded, now we would have two bonds and that would create parallel paths and push current onto our ground wires, which isn't safe. The only exception to this would be if your transfer switch switches not only the hot conductors, but also the neutral conductor. Then the generator would become a separately derived system and the bond would move from the service to the generator. But that's not common. Most home backup systems don't switch the neutral. So why do so many generators ship with bonded neutrals? Probably liability protection. A bonded neutral is required when a generator is used as a standalone power source, like on a job site or when you're out camping. That bond gives your generator a reference point so your circuit breakers function correctly. If your generator has a floating neutral, you can use a bonding plug like we made earlier when you're using your generator as a standalone system. Quick note about power stations. They don't need a bonded neutral for standalone use like a generator does. I'll be making a future video on that. But the key takeaway here is you only want one neutral to ground bond. In most home backup setups, that means your generator or your power station should have a floating neutral. And don't worry about that phantom voltage. It's completely normal and it's safe. If you wanna learn more about generators, power stations, and home backup systems, check out this playlist right here. And if you found value in this video, do me a huge favor and hit that like button. It helps the video spread to a wider audience. I really appreciate you guys being here and I will see you on the next one.